Welcome to Nightline, the morning after on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO, Night Nation's only call-in show goes live now. All right, this is Nightline, the morning after. I am Andrew Fegley. Night Nation, how you doing? We are live from the VictoryCasinoCruises.com studio, also from the 1148 studio. We've got guys on the phone. We've got guys back in the studio. Uh, We're brought to you by Chad Bar Law, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call at 407-599-9036 for a free consultation. Visit ChadBarLaw.com. We've also got... Uh, Ben Stout on the phone. Ben, can you hear me? How you doing? Okay, well, maybe we have Ben, maybe uh, we hold, don't. Oh, we got him. He he fell off the line. Okay. Well, we got uh, Chase and Casey in the studio as well. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Uh, we're here. I think we got Absolutely. Ben. Ben, are you there? Live radio. I can unfortunately <laughs> barely hear you guys. Um, oh, I, okay. It's, it's cracking in and out, so I, I apologize. There must be something going on with the phone. Um, all right. Well, we will try to have, yeah, we'll try to have Ben going. If not, uh, we will talk amongst ourselves. So, uh, that's all good. Uh, we are taking your calls 844-225-5580 on the Dever team line. Uh, and then text 21232 and, uh, Casey or Chase will read those to us. If you want to use that, or you can reach me AP underscore nightline on Twitter uh, you guys can call in and uh, give us stuff to talk about. Things that you want to hear would be absolutely awesome. In the second segment, I do have an interview uh, that we did last week with Coach Lovelady, which was a, a really great interview that I, I really enjoyed. And we're going to play like the first part of that. And, uh, you know, later on, we can probably uh, – do a little bit more of that in the coming weeks as well. It was kind of a long interview, so we, we can't do it all on here, but we will, we will do segments of it on here. So in the second segment, after the first commercial break, we will play a little bit of that. Uh, so guys back in the studio, how are you guys, uh, feeling about this whole thing? I mean, life has changed as we know it for the time being, but how are you guys handling it? You guys are working a lot, I know. Yeah, we're doing a lot of a lot more working, and it, it's been a lot more chaotic. But so far, so good. Like we've been, I guess we've become borderline germaphobes in this whole thing because it seems like we're the only two people that wear latex gloves and we're like wiping the crap out of everything just to make sure that everything's clean. Um, sports aspect, gosh, it's whew. It, we're, we're feeling it now. Like it's realizing, Oh, that's right. We might have an addiction. And I think was, I was talking to one of the uh, DJs over at star and they were saying like, I needed something. I signed up for the WWE trial just to watch WrestleMania. I don't even watch wrestling. And he, he just got it just for that. And I think that's what we're kind of getting at that point right now. Yeah. And you know, for me, it's, it's not having baseball hurts so much and, and you know, whether that's college or major leagues and, you know, going to the events also. I mean, I'm a huge guy to go to see the games live, Tampa Bay. You know, as bad as Tropicana Field is, I'll still go there as much as I can because I love watching the game. And then now, you know, you're at home and, you know, you're there on Twitter trying to stream the MLB 2K series, which is just a joke because it's it's just not real and it hurts. Or the MLB The Show, whatever they did the other day. But, mm-hmm. you know, at this point, it's going to come down to, you know, how are these seasons going to end up? Because right now, truthfully, we still do not know. Yeah. Uh, so Casey, uh, you're kind of new to the nightline world. You, you, we were on with Sam, I think one time when, when he was in the studio, but tell us a little bit about yourself. So people will understand when you talk about baseball, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. So I'm originally from Long Island, New York, grew up as a Mets fan. So I've struggled with adversity my entire life. Uh, and then came down here, played division two baseball at Rollins in winter park here in, in, in Orlando. And you know, it's been my entire life uh, since day one. I've played baseball and, you know, just graduated actually in 2019 in May. And, you know, I, I literally went to every single game they played this year. And to see their season end, especially for the seniors, that was tough. And, you know, I'm so fortunate to actually have finished my senior season. And now I know the NCAA is suspecting to give back those years. There's still a lot of kinks to work out. Uh, you know, I have a buddy who plays at UCF. And he still doesn't, they still haven't really heard any information yet. So it's really interesting to see what baseball has done. The MLB, 
Yeah, but the NCAA specifically, because that's a huge question mark right now. And I'm sure Greg Lovelady's got some things to say in the interview in segment two. Yeah, he does. He he really went through it with us. He is a really cool guy. I don't know if you know him well, but he's one of my favorite people out there. He's He talks just, you know, just like the rest of us do. And basically, we'll we'll uh, talk about anything that you want, and you know, so that's that's pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. Also, in this interview, if if for people that haven't heard it, I I, I guess probably a lot of the people that are are listening to this right now that know the Nightline brand have probably heard this because it was on the Nightline on our podcast uh, this last week, but. He goes in, uh, not in the segment that I'm going to play, but in the in the latter segment, he goes in and talks about uh, how he says that he thinks that he, what he does is a service industry as well. Um, and I, I ask him about that, and I'm like, whoa, wait a second. You said that you're, you know, I've never heard a coach say anything like that before, but he's, he wants to give the players the best experience they have. Uh, you know, they can have in the college life and all that stuff. And, and that's really impressive. I, I, he had me like, uh, you know, Googling to see if I had any eligibility left, to be honest with you, after he <laughs> said something like that, because I've never heard a coach say anything like that personally. Yeah. And, you know, the team this year, especially, it's a big thing when you take a series away from Auburn, any SEC team, period. And it's frustrating for him, probably, because they had some big names on that schedule and it could have been another one of those Auburn series where they could have taken another tough opponent series away from them. And UCF, man, they could have been in, in a situation this year to be in those regionals and in those, in, in, you know, potentially in the final four. That's how good they looked, in my opinion. And that pitching was really good, too. I think it was like four of their pitchers that, uh, four of their starters, I think, had like a sub one ERA or one yeah. or below. Okay, so I I think I have Ben on my end now. Okay, just to see if it, if it's a little bit better for him. Ben, are you there? I am here. How you doing, Andrew? I'm good, my friend. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry about yeah. this. All you know, it is what it is. We're all learning how to do this. It, it's one of those things. So um, this is our our new life, I guess. Uh, you know, dealing with bad phone connections and and slow internet connections and everything else. So uh, I figured we would try it this way and see if it would work. You're not going to be able to hear the guys in the studio or the callers, unfortunately, but you'll be able to hear me, which is the most important, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm uh, sorry I couldn't be with you in person today, but I figured it'd be best if we uh, did this remote for, uh, for this week. And I uh, appreciate you allowing me to uh, join you guys. Um, I wish I could hear the rest of the guys as well, but uh, we'll we'll uh, make it a good show. Yeah, maybe we'll figure it out in the break or something and see if we can do something. But Ben, I yeah, wanted to ask good. you, how are you doing? You're you're you've been working at home and with your kids and everything else. So how how's how's everything going? Yeah, things have been going great. Uh, just uh, uh, kind of adjusting as I, as as I talked about last couple of weeks, just adjusting to that new normal of uh, working from home and uh, my uh, as as most people around the around the country, um, I had my boss tell me this week that uh, we're definitely going to be working from home until the end of April, uh, potentially longer. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting time. That's for sure. It's one that, uh, we're making all sorts of different adjustments. Um, but, um, most people I know and my, myself are no different. We're, uh, we're trying to make the best of it and trying to just, uh, make adjustments where we can and just be patient and, um, try to work through it together. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, that's all that we can do is, is try to get through this and get through it together. Uh, I still wish that people would would chill out just a little bit. It's it's uh you know they don't need to go buy everything that they see in the grocery store. You just get what you need and and all that stuff. I think that's the my biggest frustration with all of this is not getting being able to get the things that we actually need because people are hoarding them. That's the thing that that bothers me the most. And and if anybody wants to comment on that, they can. Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, no, I, uh, I certainly agree with you on that front. The, uh, I wish that uh, I've heard from many people that I know that have worked for different uh, supermarket chains, some of them decently high up, who have um, who have said if we just if we just for one week, um, you know, bought normally, uh, we went to a, a normal uh, pattern of uh, not buying uh, too much that you, that you, 
you know, more than you need, for instance, uh, then the supply chain could normalize. And maybe we might be past that time at the moment. It might take longer than that at the moment. But uh, certainly a few weeks ago, we were at that point where if we just spent one week uh, resetting and just buying what you need um, for for that week or for the next couple of weeks or whatever, uh, then the supply chain could have normalized and we could have been a lot better. So I'm hoping that people continue to do that as we, um, as you see certain restrictions and, uh, on certain goods in the, in the grocery store, et cetera. And, and I, I go, know we're, oh, go oh, ahead. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I've noticed I, I went to Publix yesterday actually, and Publix was actually very well stocked except for one thing, the toilet paper. We're yeah. still apparently <laughs> having that issue. Yeah, that's kind of one of those things. I had the same experience or my wife had the same experience the other day. We were finally be able to get some chicken, which was nice at Publix. That, that's that been out. And I know we're supposed to be talking about sports. This is a sports you know, show, but there are no sports. This is what's going on with our lives right now. And I mean, we could talk about replays that we've seen on TV, which is really interesting as far as I'm concerned. But... <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's amazing to see all the replays and, and if you have ESPN plus and all that stuff, you can go on and you can watch all this stuff. Anyway, you could have done a lot of that, but they've really added to that collection that's on ESPN plus. So you can go back and, and do stuff. They've been, you know, playing games with, with commentary and, and with new commentary and everything else. So it's, it's really interesting. Esports as well is very interesting. Um, I guess I'll call on each of you individually to talk about things since Ben can't hear us. Ben, first <laughs> of all, have you watched any esports? Uh, I can say that I have not. Uh, I have not taken that leap uh, where I'm. Uh, I'm so starved that I, I have. I've jumped into esports. I started watching uh, the NBA players doing their 2K tournament the other night. And um, I can't remember the exact two plays, Zach Levine versus DeAndre Ayton in an NBA 2K tournament. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I, <laughs> I, I didn't mind playing video games back when I was in college. I don't play them anymore. Uh, but watching two guys, I don't care if they're celebrities that I know or not, uh, playing video games and, and talking about it, talking trash to each other. It wasn't quite my cup of tea, so I turned it off pretty quick. What about so you I guys? I quite gotten yeah. to the esports. <laughs> yeah. What about you guys back in the studio? Have you been watching any esports? Well, this is my cup of tea. So, yes, I have watched esports. And uh, they've been having the Call of Duty League has gotten back up already. And uh, Florida has a team. The Florida Mutineers are actually pretty good. Um, they should be. I think they might be playing ten, uh, later today, but I'm not entirely certain. There's the Overwatch League that I've been getting into. Florida also has a team, the Florida Mayhem. They are like every other Florida team in that they are disappointing and awful. Unlike UCF, who is not disappointing and awful. Plug. Um, other than that, um, yeah, I've been watching some other things here and there. I don't want to go full too full nerdy on this, but yes, I have been watching more and more esports. I'm the esports guy here at 580. Uh, I haven't been watching esports, but I've definitely been playing esports. I actually I got so bored at home because of what's going on that I actually purchased an Xbox last week. So I've definitely been in that realm once again, but I don't necessarily watch the esports type thing. I'm I keep watching the replays. There was a the Lakers Celtics playoff game on on ABC yesterday, and I I will admit I watched the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, just for Ben's recap, since he can't hear y'all, uh, Chase has been watching esports, and then Casey has been playing a little bit of esports, so they are involved in esports. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, the only thing that I have watched, I did watch some of the NASCAR esports stuff with the eye racing. I used to do the eye racing. I wasn't very good at it because uh, you can't feel the car, and that's a little bit hard for me because I like to, when I drive, I feel the you know centrifugal force and know what my car can do, blah, blah, blah. So it's it's a little bit difficult to play, you know, to go around a track and not know when your tires are going to come out from under you. And And I don't know how these guys do it. Uh, these you know professional NASCAR racers that are doing the esports, some of them are, are are really good, and some of them aren't so good at doing the esports. But I guess that they they work on a lot of simulators as well, anyway, and they use iRacing to do that. But um, you know, I, I think some of their setups are the really really good setups that actually move, and you can actually feel things. And and you know, the normal person doesn't have a setup where 
you know, a motion set up for their car racing. So, you know, that uh, that's kind of interesting, though, that that this is what the world has come to, I guess. It could also come to uh, later on having sports played in empty stadiums, which I'm not a huge fan of. And, and I and I don't. I don't know about that. Uh, we'll talk more about this. I, I guess we could talk about it real quick now. Um, but uh, President Trump had a call with all of the major uh, leaders of, of the uh, the sports commissioners yesterday. And uh, he had to I guess he said that football would be ready to go by September. And we shall see about that, I guess. Uh, because certain people responded to that and said, Gavin, Gavin Newsom, who was the California governor, said, I don't think that that's going to happen. So I don't p- anticipate that happening in this state. And then he went on to, to say why. Uh, so not sure if, if everything's going to go down the way that we want it to. Well, to be fair, no one was going to yeah, charge us games multiple, anyway. Um... You, know, you heard multiple kind of notifications and uh, reports yesterday about that. And I heard that uh, Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, uh, wanted to be on the forefront of um, kind of setting the tone um, about how we could restart uh, sports in a smart and, um, you know, the, the right way, if, if you will. I mean, he's he's a commissioner. That's a league that's been rather progressive and, and wanted to be on the front lines and innovative on how they present the sport in general. And so I wouldn't be surprised if he really takes the lead there um, as Adam Silver and and tries to um, tries to set the tone on what a new uh, new normal could look like, at least for the uh, upcoming months and potentially year uh, as we kind of bounce back from this. So it'd be interesting to see uh, what happens there. And Adam Silver kind of has the most skin in the game from a sense that his his season got interrupted. His playoffs got interrupted. Um, we, we basically would be uh, gearing up for the playoffs right about now. And so certainly um, he's the one that's probably the most motivated to get something going uh, soon, but get something going in a smart way. Absolutely. All right. Hey, we're, we need to take our first break. We will be right back on Nightline the morning after. We will do the interview with Coach Lovelady at the start of the second segment, and then we'll be back to talk about it after that. Back on Nightline the morning after on ESPN 580 WDBO. And now, back to Nightline the morning after on ESPN 580 Orlando WDBO. Call now at 844-225-5580 or text at 21232. We should be recapping UCF baseball's weekend series at Memphis. Instead, we're talking about a season ended by a global pandemic. Joining us now, man I'm used to interviewing in his office and on the field after the game, Knights head coach Greg Lovelady is on the Nightline hotline. Coach, welcome to Nightline. I appreciate you guys having me. First and foremost, how is life for you and your family in this changed environment? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's good. Um, as good as it can be, I guess. I mean, I, I, you know, I try to take the positive outlook of it all. So uh, everybody's healthy and, um, you know, obviously it's a different, different, uh, lifestyle than we're used to in terms of being home all the time. But, um, kids spend a lot of time in the pool, being outside, riding bikes and stuff like that. So just trying to make the most of it. And, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, use this time maybe to just grow closer as a family and stuff and, and take advantage of, of the situation. You have young kids. They're a fixture at the ballpark. You can hear them and see them throughout games and after the games. How have you and your family explained all that's going on to, to young kids? Uh, I mean, we just try to be honest with them. I mean, I understand that, um, you know, it's just something that's going on in the world, not, nothing that we can control. And um, Obviously, there's some concerns, um, you know, just in terms of um, obviously passing it on and, and what, what that could do and um, that, you know, that they're in no bigger, you know, I'm just being honest with you, there's no, they're no bigger harm than they are from, from a lot of other things. Um, um, obviously that the increase in, in, you know, the chances of somebody getting sick or, or older, that, that that's not saying that they can't get sick, but, 
Um, but obviously it's something that we're, we're concerned about just for the greater population and we got to make good decisions, to try to do our part to, to try to slow this, slow this growth down and, and, and hopefully till they find a, a cure or a way to, to be able to stop it. So, uh, but I'm just under, letting them make sure that they know that it's, it's nothing that, um, you know, we're in serious harm or anything like that. We just got to take precautions and make sure we're making good decisions. Well, along those lines as well, you guys were on a real good roll uh, at, the, at the start of the season. I mean, it, it, we were so excited for what was going to happen with UCF baseball. It, it, we'd seen it coming and coming for a while, and, and it was finally here in front of us. What did you tell the players? Because the players had to be extremely disappointed about all this. Yeah, you know, it really was, uh, I mean, probably the, to me, the worst of this whole situation was that, you know, it it wasn't like an abrupt ending where it was like, okay, their season's over and, and, and whatnot. I mean, it was bits and pieces every couple hours and, and, and through the coming days. And so, you know, we, we had the game against Miami on Wednesday, Thursday morning, we were on spring breaks. So we ended up practicing, um, you know, late morning, um, and, and, and stuff started to come out. We were, we were, you know, obviously the Yale series had been canceled. Uh, we were working with Stetson on, on figuring out a plan. We had some other teams that were, were trying to get involved. Um, so there was like four coaches, like trying to put things together, trying to figure out how we were going to go about getting the games in for the weekend. Um, you know, then actually during practice, um, came to the realization that that was not going to happen. Um, I was on the phone. I was on the phone the whole entire practice, didn't pay attention to one, one second of practice. I uh, was doing all this, trying to get everything done. And, um, then obviously told the guys at the end of practice, like, look, like the bad news is we're not going to play this weekend. Um, you know, we'll be back at it on Monday. I gave them the weekend off. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday said, let's come back on Monday. Uh, we don't need to practice this weekend. Um, you know, we'll come back on Monday. We'll get back at it and, and we'll see. Hopefully this is, you know, a week or two shut down. And, um, and then obviously, you know, things just started to get incrementally worse. Um, you know, then Friday we were at the office just kind of hanging out. And then Friday afternoon, College World Series get canceled. So the players had already kind of been released for the rest of their spring break. So there really was no team meeting like, hey, the College World Series has been canceled. I mean, they, you know, I tried to update them as much as I could, but I'm sure they, they found out faster through social media than they did through me. So, uh, and then obviously, you know, Sunday night we decide, okay, well, we don't really need to practice. Let's just kind of see what happens where they're not coming back to school. Um, you know, in terms of having to go to class. So let's, let's give this a couple more days and figure out what's going on. And obviously it just kept getting worse and worse. So, uh, I mean, the one thing for me that the, just the finality of the season just never happened. You know, usually whether it's, you know, the last couple of years sitting in front of a TV and finding you're not in the regional or losing in a regional or losing your last game. I mean, there's kind of that finality of the hugs and the tears and the, uh, it's just kind of like the normal process of getting to the end of the season and being able to, you know, take the couple of days and individual meetings and all that kind of stuff. And so this has been just been totally, you know, out of the norm. And so it's been, you know, it's been hard to deal with. And so, uh, but the players just trying to update them as much as I possibly could and, and give them information. But, you know, this is just, you know, again, we, we try to think of us as educators and this being a microcosm of life. Uh, we talk a lot about on the baseball field, being able to handle your emotions, control the things that you can control. There's a lot of things that are out of your control, whether umpires, other team, um, the coaches, like you've got to be able to handle the good and the bad and, and be able to continue to push forward, pitch to pitch. Uh, and you gotta be able to do the same thing in life, um, day to day. So, um, just trying to make sure that they are aware and, and just, you know, understanding that life's not fair and this sucks. And, uh, but it's also, we're just a small part of this whole thing. It's not just the UCF baseball team. It's not just baseball. It's not just the NCAA and all those spring sports. Um, but it, it's, everybody's being affected by this and, this is something that's just greater than us, and we just got to be able to push forward and, and keep moving forward. The sun keeps rising, and, and we just got to take make the most of it. And, uh, you know, a phrase we always sometimes use is it doesn't matter, get better. It doesn't matter if the umpire, you know, 
made a bad call. Like we got to get better, like just keep pushing forward. And so, you know, it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, like we just got to find ways to get better. And, um, and, and, you know, academically we're, we're make sure we're staying on par and, um, you know, obviously doing something, whether that's, you can't get out of the house, you know, find a way to, to do something, whether that's mentally visualization, um, you know, dry work, whatever, whatever, just do something physical and, and keep your body in shape and, and be prepared for whenever, ever they tell us we're allowed to do something together or, uh, we move on to summer ball or, or whatever the case is. Let's just not sit around and, you know, be lazy all day, like find a way to get better. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we've kind of been discussing was like the nutrition and things like that, that players are used to getting when they're, when they're, you know, with the team and, and at the school and stuff like that. How do you keep anything like that going, you know, during a, t- a time like this? I mean, it's, it's unprecedented, you know, yeah. what has to be done. <laughs> Well, as good as the food is at our nutrition center for our athletes, I'm assuming mom's cooking is probably a lot better. So, <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure they're eating just fine. That's the last thing of my worries, to be honest with you, with you is the nutrition. I mean, guys that haven't gone home that are still hanging around here, um, you know, those guys I'm a little bit more concerned about. Um, you know, the guys at home, I mean, it's such a big part of our problem, uh, our program, the nutrition. I mean, it's one of the four pillars of our program. It, it's what we recruit to and, and something that we believe in and in terms of developing players is, is physically and, and a lot of that is nutrition. So we talk so much about it and we, uh, we, we stress it so much that hopefully it's ingrained. I mean, that's part of the thing. Again, uh, we want them to be able to nutritionally make good decisions for the rest of their lives. So we're trying to educate them. So hopefully they're staying on point. I mean, hopefully, you know, we've talked a lot. We've, we've had some Zoom Zoom meetings with the kids and, um, you know, just tell them that this is an opportunity to – to get stronger and, and, and put weight on. So make sure that they're eating and, and, and following the, the kind of the guidelines and the plan that we set forth. And, uh, they have workouts, uh, based off of everything that they have access to. So, uh, we just need them to keep, keep trying to make gains. Um, and, and for whatever that gain is, we, we keep down and we're not sure it could be summer ball. It could be next fall. Um, we're not really sure what the gains are for, but we know that those gains are going to one, one day, whenever they tell us to play ball, uh, they're going to be a big part of your development. So just, just keep pushing forward. And, and again, it's out of our control. So, uh, just be ready. I, mean, I always tell the guys on rain delays and stuff like that. Like you just got to be ready. You can't, you can't check out and, 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 and waste a day because of the weather. Like just stay mentally locked in. And when that umpire says play ball, we better be ready to go. And so we, we just got to look at it from that kind of perspective that whenever they say, you know, get back to work and whether that's in three weeks, uh, three months or six months, like you just gotta be ready. You played the game. You know what it's like to be a senior. Your heart goes out to the yeah. seniors whose season was cut short, especially as Andrew said, a season that held such promise. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, you put so much time and effort and obviously seniors who especially have no idea if this is going to be their last, per, you know, experience in this game that have been playing it probably since they were five or six years old. Um, and, and there's just obviously a lot of expectations of what you get to experience, you know what I mean? And getting able to play one more season and do a senior day and hopefully a regional and all that kind of stuff. And um, it just, it magnifies everything. I think that everything means more. You, you, you soak it all in. Um, you're just kind of more aware of your surroundings, more aware of the moments uh, your senior year. And so, um, that makes it really difficult. Uh, I just know how much my senior year meant to me. I mean, I actually, you know, I was like, a a uh, reality i filmed everything i took a camera with me everywhere we went i mean i have never watched them but i've got videos in the hotels and all that of, of my senior year and just to make memories of it all and i just remember all those things and just being you know something that's near and dear to my heart so that those kids get to to not be able to do that is is really difficult to swallow and then obviously again i mean you know it, it it, it stings less now but and you, again you look at it from a global standpoint and and it, and it definitely makes you uh, be able to handle it a little bit more, but obviously the season that we're having, how hard our kids worked, uh, and not just how hard they worked in terms of being great baseball players, but just the culture of the program, the the, the guys, how much they cared and put into this. Um, they they wanted to do something different. They wanted to do something that had never been done here before, and uh, obviously the, the trajectory of the season and and where we were going it it was on that trajectory to do that. And, and that puts our program on a different trajectory. And so those guys, um, I hope that that, that still is the case in terms of the program. Um, and, you know, we, we do talk a lot about uh, planting trees and leaving legacies and, and you know, planting seeds that, 
you know, you're never going to see the the growth. You know what I mean? That you're you're doing the things now that maybe five years from now, because of what you did, uh, something great happens. Um, you just don't expect that this would be the way that it would happen. That they don't even get, you know, to kind of see through at least the season to know that hey, look at all the hard work we put in and and the things that we were able to accomplish. And this is the beginning of something even bigger than that. And so uh, you just feel for all the kids, uh, but especially the seniors who who you know hopefully uh, you know. Hopefully, maybe they get another year. We'll, we'll see. But, um, you know, the, if this could be the end of their baseball careers, uh, it's just a really, really tough way to go out. All right. Well, that was Coach Lovelady, the UCF head baseball coach. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and then we'll be back on Nightline the morning after to discuss. And now, back to Nightline the morning after on ESPN 580 Orlando WDBO call now at 844-225-5580 or text at 21232 all right back on nightline the morning after this is Andrew Fegley and we are live from the victory casino cruises or dot com studio uh, home of the only legal sports book in central Florida and from the 1148 Studios, which is my studio for Nightline, brought to you by the Chad Bar Law, uh, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call at 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. We just had uh, the interview with, um, with Coach Lovelady that we did on Nightline last week. So he ended that with saying that uh, you know, they may get some eligibility back. And that, that was kind of where we, we left off. Uh, there's more of that interview. I'll probably play some next week and maybe even the week after that because it is like a, about a 30-minute interview. But I wanted to, to play a little bit of that on here, especially because I wanted to get uh, – I wanted Casey to talk to us about that. That's one of the biggest things because Casey's a baseball player. He's he's a young guy. He he played college baseball recently. Casey, what did you think about uh, about what uh, Coach Lovelady had to say right there? I mean, he hit on he hit on all the emotional points, and and that's what really stuck to me. And and starting with the fact that there was so much unknown in the beginning of all of this, and all of these college coaches, and I interviewed a few of them. You know, for News 96.5 WDBO, I interviewed some of the stuff. You know, I went to Rollins. You know, I talked to some of the UCF players. And the weeks leading up to it, like he said, it was a blindside. I even talked to some parents. And, you know, when I mentioned to them that the next series, <clears throat> excuse me, in the weekend could be canceled, they they shrugged and said, no way. There's no way the next series can get canceled. Well, Andrew, how about the rest of the season? I mean, that that was what shocked a lot of these people. And and that was the one point that he touched upon. You know, he told he told you the, about the schedule. You know, from the Monday to to the Friday, the the epidemic and how it changed during a course of of just five days, and that was just eye opening to me as it was to everybody else. And the second thing that I want to touch on, there's only two things, but the second thing that really opened my eye about, you know, we we already talked about the seniors, but the nutrition, and that is something that's a lost art in, in the NCAA and, and in sports for college athletes because. I'll tell you right now, going through it, that was never touched upon for me. And not saying that has anything to do with, you know, my institution and where I'm from, but it's a it's a topic that is not talked about very often. And he he is concerned for some of the players that are still here because they're probably afraid to go out. And unless they're home, you know, they're not being, you know, you know, nurtured the way they should. And 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 him taking it as a for as a, as a fourth pillar in their organization to make sure that these players can get the best out of their experience. I think that is just high class as a coach. And, and, and he said so many positive things, which, you know, makes me believe why all these guys are getting drafted and why they've had success over the last two years. Absolutely. Yeah. I think one of the most high class guys that's out there, I think I have Ben back on the phone with me, Ben, were you able to hear that uh, interview? Some of it yeah, at least. I was able I was able to hear the interview. I dropped off the uh, studio line, but I was able to, I don't know what trick you just did there, Andrew, but I was able to hear the tail end of Casey's comments there. And I couldn't agree. <laughs> well, I, you I know, could. what's funny is I, I just, I did it old school. I put a little, uh, another set of headphones up to the phone. So <laughs> we're, we're pulling out all the, the studio <laughs> tricks here on a nightline the morning after. 
uh, and we're, we're doing what we have to do. So, uh, I, I, re- <laughs> I really appreciate all the help and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, making sure that I'm included in the show. I re- I really appreciate all, all the tricks that we're pulling out here, but, uh, I definitely to kind of piggyback on, on some of the things that I heard Casey just touch on there. I mean, uh, definitely the nutrition being the fourth pillar, that was something that stood out, um, in uh, Coach uh, Lovelady's interview and some of the things that he said, um, you know, that's a really important part of his um, his teachings and, and his coaching methods is to make sure that they're what these athletes are putting in their body are the right things. And just overall, Coach Lovelady, I mean, he's a extremely he seems like an extremely not only classy guy, but a guy that um, I'd certainly if my my son uh, grows up to be you know, a a really solid uh, high school baseball player. If that, if that particular uh, sport is one that uh, he continues to show interest in, if uh, then certainly coach Lovelady is a guy um, that I, I, I would want my son to play for his, his, you know, his thing about it being a, he, him being in a service industry, I, that, that was something that stood out to me right away. I, I know that your ears perked up when you heard that and you asked a question about it in the interview, Andrew, it was just, uh, he seems like an extremely classy guy and a personable guy. Yeah, I think that will be on the next uh, edition of this, that question in particular. I, I don't think that that was in this one, but you heard the whole interview on Nightline or, or whatever, and it, those of you that have, uh, but we'll, we'll play more of it next week, and I think that's when we talk about that. But yeah. I think we have Roger on the phone in the studio as well, Roger Nightbingle. Roger, are you there? Can you hear me? I am. Good morning, boys. Hey, it sounds pretty good, actually. So, uh, how you doing, man? I can't complain. Um, you know, just hanging out here up in North Florida still. So, beautiful weather. Trying to enjoy a little bit of that while socially distancing. Um, but other than that, doing really well and enjoying having at least some sort of normalcy with the show going on every week. So, to everyone who's a part of that, congratulations and thank you for keeping some normalcy in our lives. Yeah, well, we're trying as hard as we can. You heard the 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 uh, interview with with Coach Lovelady there. What did you uh, What do you think about that? Well, the thing about Coach, and you kind of touched on it before you uh, before you actually played the interview. He's um, he's a down to earth guy, and he comes across as as if he cares a lot. I mean, he's pretty emotional. Sometimes you've seen him cry. You've seen him do other things. It just seems like a good guy, and that kind of comes across there, too. He, What I got from that is, one, they were all very, very surprised on how this worked, right? And they, as coaches, were kind of – didn't get a whole lot of communication from the NCAA. Now, granted, just like the rest of us, we didn't know how bad this thing was going to get, but for them, that had been a heck of an experience trying to put together all those different pieces to keep the season going. And then all of a sudden hearing, Hey guys, we, we can't do that. And that transitions then again to what do you do with these guys? Cause they are going to have another um, year of eligibility. How do you keep them motivated? Because you've got them typically on campus, they're training in the off seasons, they're hitting batting cages, they're in the weight room. Um, you know, they've got the nutrition center, the Garvey center that was just built um, and I know he, he talked a little about, about mom's home cooking, but he's got to be uh, concerned that there isn't as much control over their diets when they're gone. Now, that being said, I can 99% guarantee you, because I know that the football players took iPads home, and part of that was dietary plans that they had taken with them. So um, I wouldn't. I also wouldn't be surprised if they were able to take some of their – uh, supplements and things home with them from the school. So I would imagine that baseball got something similar. But as far as a person is concerned, I mean, it's, it almost sounds like a fatherly figure. He was just trying to figure it out as we kind of went along like the rest of us. And, and the biggest question mark for all of us is, is how long is this thing going to last, right? The good news is the seniors are going to get that extra season back. We had a heck of a team. We had hitting. We had pitching. We had base running. Most of the time that didn't drive me nuts, but there were a few decisions from the third base coach that kind of, you know, but, uh, but that w- it was a heck of a team and one of the best baseball teams we've had um, as, a, uh, as, a, uh, as a team in a really, really long time. So it was, 
disappointing. He didn't really display as much disappointment in the coaching part of it, but I think for him, and especially as we go into the off season, depending on how long it, it takes, it's just keeping contact with the players, making sure they're keeping up some sort of activity regimen, and making sure that uh, from a dietary uh, perspective that they're keeping up um, you know, what they need to to make sure that they're the best that they can be when they come back. Absolutely. Well, yeah. go ahead, Ben. Yeah, well, one of the things we, I was just going to comment. We're a little bit short on time, so you got about two minutes there real quick. Okay, real quick. I just wanted to say one of the things that I found interesting, it was more about uh, it, besides the, what he actually said, it was kind of what was behind his voice. Roger mentioned that he's an emotional guy. It, he did kind of seem a little bit anxious and has some anxiety about the uh, the extra year of eligibility that could be granted at that time. We know now that it, it was granted, the, uh, that the spring sports were granted an extra year of eligibility for their affected seniors in this uh, particular case. And so I think that the coaching decisions that happened this offseason for all spring sports, in particularly a baseball and softball team that's just got a map just got a large amount of players to deal with. Um, it's just going to be really fascinating in the off season to see what happens with those sports and how those decisions um, affect the, the coaches and the, and a more, most importantly, the student athletes, do they continue scholarships? Do they, do some of them go off scholarship but still get their senior year? Do some of them just move on because um, it's the, that's the right decision for them? It's going to be really fascinating to see what happens with this extra year of eligibility because it's really unprecedented. All right. Well, we're, well, let's take a quick little break here, and then we'll be back, and we'll talk a little bit more about this on Nightline the morning after. We got all kinds of stuff there that that brought up, the NCAA's ruling on the extra year and everything else. We'll be right back on Nightline the morning after. And now, back to Nightline, the morning after, on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO. Call now at 844-225-5580 or text at 21232. All right, back on Nightline, the morning after, live from the Victory Casino Cruises and the 1148 Studios. Uh, the Victory Casino Cruises.com is uh, the the one place that you can go and uh, gamble on all kinds of stuff um, legally in Central Florida, by the way. They, they take a boat out. It's awesome. Not sure if they're doing that at this point, but... When they get started again, it's absolutely awesome. Okay, we're brought to you by Chad Bar Law, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036, for a free consultation, or visit chadbar, uh, chadbarlaw.com. I'm getting my words mixed up here, live radio, folks. Uh, we're also taking your calls, um, 844-225-5580 if you want to comment on this. So far, we've talked about uh, a lot of baseball stuff because we we had a little bit of an interview there with uh, Coach Lovelady, the head coach at UCF. And uh, uh, <laughs> I, I'm getting all the – so there's all these names of, of different people. Casey is the guy, though, that played for Rollins Baseball. I'm, we'll we've get got there. Roger we'll get on there. the phone. We've got Ben on the phone. We've got – Chase and Casey in the studio, and yeah, so there's all kinds of confusion. I, I'm we're doing all kinds of crazy stuff here to make this happen today. But Casey, I wanted to talk to you a, a little bit more about that. You're the last one of all of us to have eligibility uh, to play for the NCAA or in the NCAA, I guess I should say. You played baseball at Rollins, um, obviously. We, we've talked about that already today. But I wanted to get your take a little bit more about this extra eligibility thing. How would how would you deal with that? How are these players going to deal with that? You know, it's funny because I live with two current Rollins baseball guys, and they ha and they were both seniors, and they have to make that decision. And one is is pretty certain he will go back and play another year, and the other isn't. And there's going to be that double side because do they want to? do school again? Do they want to start their careers? And then there's even a player that I interviewed uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago on News 96.5 that has to make a decision whether or not he wants to go back and play another year or enter as a draft-eligible player. So 
there's obviously so many different opportunities and combinations that you can portray with this situation. But personally, I would 100% take the extra year. This is your senior year you're talking about. This is supposed to be the highlight of your career. My senior year was my best season. I had the best numbers. I played the most. You had senior night. It was emotional. I got to say thank you to baseball. And that was the essential ending, and that's what I wanted. It was a fairy tale story ending. Any baseball player who knows that college is the end of the road, they want that. Unless you're going to play pro, which is you know in the aspect where if I was pro eligible to go to the major leagues, this would be a tough decision because now it has to do with going back and paying for another year of education, going back and doing classes, or getting paid to play baseball. So there's obviously so many different you know things that you can you know put together to make a decision, but at the end of the day, it's what is best for you? What is going to make you feel the best? And I think with a lot of guys, they're going to take that extra year. Now, my last point on this is, this is going to be difficult for the coaches because think about the 2021 and 22 recruiting classes coming in. So much for their first year and so much for them. So they're all going to have to redshirt. And freshmen, most of the time in D1 and and even D2, you'll be surprised, will redshirt because there are juniors, seniors, and even sophomores who are ahead of them. But now it could be every single freshman that redshirts, which means there's probably going to be a huge gap year in recruiting, and that could cause a lot of controversy. Yeah, and I'm wondering, like, what are they going to call these seniors that come back? Are they going to call them, like, a like a senior plus or something? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't even know, like, how that would work, a especially, you know, with... Yeah, a super senior or something. <laughs> exactly. That, that was a good one there, Chase. Um, yeah, it, it, it just it messes all kinds of stuff up, especially for recruiting. That's the thing that I worry about. And then I, I wonder, I, I haven't read the rules yet for the NCAA with this, but I wonder if they're going to make them take classes as well. I mean, because that's always been one of the rules. Are they going to have to start a master's program, even if they didn't really want to? You know, there's all kinds of stuff. And there's those guys going to the, you know, that could go to Major League Baseball and be draft eligible as well. So we got a couple of minutes left here. Uh, ben, do you have anything else there? Yeah, I just, I mean, I'll, I'll echo Casey's comments. I mean, he, he said it perfectly. I mean, it, that it's a huge decision for uh, the players involved, and certainly uh, the coaches have just a ton of decisions to line up. They have a lot of, lot of um, process-driven stuff that they have to, alter because of what just happened and what is going to continue to happen with um, the extra year of eligibility. I mean, love lady in particular, um, being our baseball coach, we, we talked about before the season and as the season started that he just, this was finally the, the time where he had his team in there and he knew, um, he knew that that was the, his first kind of recruiting cycle. And then all of a sudden it, it, this all got blown up. And now, now as he's, First, getting it rolling here uh, on the recruiting front, um, this is all kind of uh, changed. So a lot of adjustments to be made, and it's going to be fascinating as a fan to watch. But certainly, um, uh, this is this is where the coaches are really going to earn their paycheck. That's for sure. Absolutely. Hey, well, I want to thank everybody that has contributed today, at called in or whatever. Uh, Roger, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Casey and Chase, as well. You've definitely brought some insight uh, to the situation, and it's made it a lot easier. So, um, you know what? We're, we're still dealing with this. We're going to be dealing with this. We're going to figure all this out. Everything is going to be okay, um, and sports will resume. Our lives will resume. Our jobs will resume. Everything's going to be okay. Uh, and I just want to remind everybody to join us again next week on Nightline the Morning After on uh, ESPN 580 Orlando WDBO, and we will talk about all this stuff again next week. I appreciate it uh, very much. Uh, so everybody go Knights and charge on. We'll see you next week, same time, same place.